Uh, John Hope Bryan is here, Operation Hope founder, CEO and chairman, and Acting Strategic Advisors co-founder Mick Mulvaney, who served, of course, in the Trump administration as OMB director, White House chief of staff, and U.S. special envoy to Northern Ireland, joining us, uh, both of you. I'm actually curious how both of you would look at the numbers and if there is uh, any light between you. I would think that there might actually be, even though we can probably agree on the facts. John, what do you think? Well, I, you know, Mick's a reasonable guy, uh, even as on, on, on his most unreasonable day. He's a reasonable guy. My very conservative friends have to admit the bones of the economy are actually uh, pretty strong. Um, some of these numbers you haven't seen in 50 years, like the sustained unemployment rate. Um, so it's really impressive. I think it, it beat the uh, estimate of many people, the jobs report that's coming out by, uh, you know, uh, an economic yard. But we're still leaving um, many people in America without the rings on the ladder uh, to, to climb up. So they, there's a little bit of frustration. You see that in our HOPE report and the 4,000 people that we surveyed. There's still a bit of frustration, but there's a difference between the reality of that the bones of the economy are solid, but also the perception that I can't grab a ladder and buy my home or start my business or the, the debt, you know, my, my personal debt's going up. And, and so the, so people are hopeful, but they need, they need hope with a business plan Test. So this is one of the unlocks we have created at Operation Hope. But I would, I'd love to hear Mick's, obviously, take on this. But my most conservative friends in the last couple of days right. have been like, I actually sort of agree. Mick, you agree, you agree with John this morning? Yeah, I think he and I are pretty much on the same page, probably both economically and politically. Talk about the economics real quick. The numbers are fantastic. Keep in mind, I don't pay as close attention to the unemployment rate because of the impact of the labor participation. I look at the raw number of jobs uh, created every single month. Anything over about 225 is a really good number. That's a good, solid, healthy growing American economy, and they blew that number out of the water. There are even some big revisions looking back a couple of months that took some numbers up um, that folks thought maybe were a little bit softer. So yeah, the numbers are probably even better uh, than we expect. But John's right. For some reason, it's not getting to everybody. And that's, let's switch over to the politics now. That's why I think the president's numbers still struggle, is that folks don't, they don't eat GDP, right? They don't understand disinflation versus, uh, uh, versus, uh, versus inflation. What they what they know is it's more expensive to live. They can't afford to buy a house. They can't afford to save money. And that's having a political impact. John, how do you explain it? Uh, folks got too much month at the end of their money, and there's more people who feel that way. 70% um, of this country living from paycheck to paycheck. Uh, if you're making $100,000 a year, half of those living from paycheck to paycheck. You're making a quarter million dollars a year. A quarter of those living, oddly enough, from well, shockingly enough, from paycheck to paycheck. But you know, if 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 you don't feel you've got, you you know what the programs are that allow you to become a homeowner, even in a in a place where interest rates have crept up a bit, and there are programs that allow you to get in, then you're frustrated. If you want to start a business and you want to have agency in your life, and you don't know about one MVB or the government has right. the government or the private sector has given you tools. I mean, I have the fact that have a credit score. Sorry, the lowest credit score in this country. Uh, is our black Americans. And we, 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 everybody knows that, you know, when the rules are published and playing vote is level, the arts, politics, entertainment, we kill it. Sports, uh, black folks will kill it. Will we succeed? But in capitalism, free enterprise, we've not been given the rule book, the memo. So half of black folks credit scores below 620, uh, Andrew. It means when we get up in the morning, we lock out the free enterprise system. It's not just black people. It's the, it's the folks, who, poor whites who are frustrated, who are now right. riding at the ballot box. So everybody needs this unlock. And I think, oddly enough, credit, you raise credit scores 100 points, Andrew, you change America. That, there's hey, a lot hey of John, I, got a, I, I want to get to Mick, but I have a, a different question, because I don't think I've got an opportunity to talk to you on the air in a very long time, uh, specifically about what's happened to DEI as a part of ESG recently in the aftermath of, of the firing of Claudine Gay, and I think so many questions, and, and if, you, if you live on X or you follow everyone on Twitter, there's a, obviously a raging debate uh, about whether uh, some DEI programs and other things have gone too far. And given what you just said, I'm curious where you land today. I mean, talk about a conversation that's, on this, is it, this, that's part of silly season. I mean, this is absolutely ridiculous. This is actually where Mick and I are actually the, the same race. <laughs> we're not black or white. We're red, red or blue. We're green. I mean, this is stupid. The, the most diverse uh, company, the most, sorry, the most profitable companies in America are diverse and inclusive. The most profitable regions in America are diverse and inclusive. 
California and New York, as an example, Atlanta, where I am in the South Coast. I mean, just blowing the doors off of the economy because we're arguing over who gets a contract, not where, who's, who, you know, what, what race you are or what, you know, these are stupid questions. Of course, diversity is good for America. Without immigrants, you wouldn't have this country. Uh, I think the majority of Nobel Peace Prize winners were immigrants. I mean, the, the immigrant debate, the DEI debate, we should try to figure out, forget the Super Bowl this Sunday, very important, but, but how, do we, how do we get the best team on the, on the, on the, the, the court or on the field, which includes all of us, to get us some more green so we're not speaking Mandarin in 10 years? We have got to figure out we're better together. That is the only answer. And 92% of America was white in 1952, 90%. Well, the majority, you know, half of America is black and brown today. So we got to get black and brown people and poor whites suited up in, in the game. Right. It, I'll put it another way, Andrew. My, French, my rich friends eat my poor friends do better if only to stay rich. This is a ridiculous conversation. No one's losing. We're expanding the table and adding a chair. Mick? Goodness gracious, where do you start with that? It's Listen, I, I love John Hope and Brian in the morning. It makes me feel better about being an American. We can have a long discussion, uh, Andrew, uh, about DEI. It's actually, I, John mentioned a couple of times, diversity and, and inclusivity. The thing that has always worried me about DEI is the equity, because I don't know what it is. I know what equality is. I know what the law means when it's supposed to be equal. Equity might mean different things to different people, and that sort of bugs me. The thing that worries me is that uh, as long as DEI treats white conservative uh, men and black women the same as they do if they're liberal, then I'm good with it. But I've always wanted a DEI sort of bent towards the more liberal political right. leanings. But again, that's that's a longer discussion right. for another day. Mick, real quick, it, it, this, is, this one's also a longer for discussion for another day. If a deal is reached uh, on the border, Ukraine and Israel this week, and I don't know whether you think there's even a shot at it, is that bad for former President Trump, or there's such a view that, that he doesn't want this to happen? I don't know if you agree or disagree with that. Is it good uh, for President Biden? Listen, the, the whole idea of one party in Washington not wanting to give the other party a win in an election year is not new. We did it to Barack Obama. They did it to Donald Trump when I was in the White House. That, that's not new. So it, I don't think that factors in. What I think factors in is not the politics of the next election, but the politics of this particular bill. The dollars just keep going up. It went from 100 billion to what, 118 billion. It still sets a threshold, I think, of 4,000 people crossing a day. So that's more than a million Americans every single day or every single year uh, coming over illegally. That that's going to be the problem with the bill as much as the politics of the 2024 election. No, I do not think it has a chance to pass.